start. Okay, let's just move this over. Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar, which is on a really interesting topic about ransomware and how it really, really can be the biggest threat to your uh, to your medical practice. Uh, my name is Mark Clark. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Advanced Data Systems. We're really happy to be able to make this presentation today. Just so everybody on the call knows who we are, uh, we're, we're based in New Jersey. We're a company that pro produces and provides a number of different types of systems for healthcare uh, and, and medical practices, systems for electronic health records, practice management. We have a separate system for radiology practices. Um, we have over 200 employees, and as you can see, we are connecting thousands of healthcare providers uh, nationwide. We've been only doing this about 40 years, so we have an unbelievable track record of stability and reliability in the industry. Our name, name of our company has never changed. We are debt-free. We are privately owned. We are highly accessible by our clients, and they, they do like that. And, you know, of course, for our systems, we feature timely implementations and training and ongoing support and updates. And you can see some of our collaborations and affiliations on the bottom. As I already mentioned, we have systems for practice management, EHR. We have a portal in radiology. And we also have a very comprehensive outsourced RCM service, Medics RCM. Uh, our systems can be implemented as still as client server, which people still want, or cloud-based. We can go either way. It doesn't matter. OK, the presenter today is, uh, is Fernando Sosa. And he is a managing partner at Worry Free MD. And that's a great name for that company, because that's exactly what they help try to do. They help try to make your practice as worry-free as possible. They're uh, a healthcare IT support company. They have 100% HIPAA um, trained staff. They provide on-site comprehensive HIPAA risk assessment. And it's guaranteed to stand up to any government audit or review. So they really, they really know what they're doing on the security and HIPAA side. And they happen to specialize in working with the independent medical practices. And they're into cybersecurity and HIPAA compliance and so on. Fernando will go into some more detail about that you know, as he goes. So, Fernando, if you yeah. are there, and if you are ready. I am ready. <laughs> I'm okay. Ready. Thank you very much. Take it away. Okay. So, let me switch over to my screen here. Okay. So, all right, so welcome everybody. Thanks again for being here. I'm very excited to do this uh, webinar and talk to you a little bit about ransomware and uh, how you can protect yourself, well, what to do it in the event that it happens, and to give you a little bit of background uh, on, on how, how it spreads as well. So this is the agenda. We're going to talk about, again, high level. This is not a technical webinar. It's not a sales presentation. It's, it's for educational purposes. So it's going to be uh, nice and quick, and it give you a lot, a lot of uh, a good overview on the topic. We're going to talk a little bit about CryptoLocker, which is uh, kind of the popular ransomware, the more uh, commonly known. There's many, many variations of that. We're going to get into that uh, in a little bit. And uh, uh, th then we're going to talk about how, how it spreads, uh, how ransomware is spread, so you are aware of the different techniques that the hackers use, uh, and what can be done if, if, if and when uh, uh, you get infected, um, what is your lifeline? What is the best chance to recover from, from something uh, that like this if it happens to your office? Touching uh, a little bit on, about business continuity and what does that mean? Then we're going to jump on some Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the, into the, into the lower right. Um, and uh, we'll, get back, we'll get to your questions at the end. And if we, can, we don't have enough time, we'll definitely follow up with uh, any questions that you have. Um, also, stick to the end because we're going to be raffling off a one-year one subscription of Office 365. So uh, stick to the end, and one lucky attendee will uh, get get uh, that uh, nice price, uh, little prize. Um, 
So again, I just wanted to uh, you know just say hello, uh, you know, visual, just to see the the face behind the, the screen, and uh, so I'm very excited to to start this. So let's get started. Okay, so ransom. Now I have here a picture of a uh, movie poster from I think 1997. I think the movie Ransom. Uh, I, I like this movie. If you're familiar with this movie, you know, it was a while ago. It has nothing to do with ransomware, but just to bring the topic up about ransom. What is ransom? Nothing new. Somebody takes something from somebody, something or someone from somebody and demands money in exchange. That's really what ransom is. So you translate that into your into computer uh, and the name ransomware was was made up. So basically it's it's a malware uh, uh, that uh, basically takes your data from your computer and other computers connected to the same network, takes the data, encrypts it, makes it unreadable, and basically uh, asks you for money in exchange for your data. So you still have the data actually, but it's encrypted. And encryption means that it's scrambled in a way that you can't open it in any of your programs. So the data is there, but you can't you can't use it. So it's it's might it's it's just as good as not being there. And so this has been been a very very popular uh, way of hackers uh, getting money from people and if you Google this you, you do some searches uh, you are aware in the news in the media it's very very uh, prominent ransomware attacks especially in healthcare hospitals entire hospitals have been held ransom uh, entire cities have been held ransom so it's not just on the healthcare it's all, all industries uh, financial industry as well so that's why it's important for you to be aware of this and know some basic concepts on how to protect yourself and what to do if it happens to you. So um, one of the preferred and the preferred way of hackers to make money off of ransomware is not through cash, not through credit card transactions. They actually use a currency called Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is, without getting into too, too, too technical, Bitcoin is, a, is, a, is an electronic method of payment and it's kind of like cash where there's no, uh, there, the money just, there's nothing in between, there's no intermediary, there's no banks, there's no credit credit agencies, there's no PayPal, no Western Union, none of that. It's, it's like an anonymous transaction. So hackers love this and they use it uh, for, to demand uh, uh, money. And the current, current, the current rate, exchange rate for Bitcoin is about, uh, one Bitcoin is about, I think it's about $600. So, um, so it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, exchange rate, but just to give you an idea, if you get infected with the ransomware, a message comes up and the hackers tell you, I want such and such, such and such, um, so many Bitcoins, and I'll give you your data back. That's, that's what they say, right? And uh, there's no guarantees that you're gonna get your data back. I'll get, that, get into that a little later, but again, you're dealing with criminals, so if a criminal says, I'm going to give you your data back if you give me some money, well, who's to say that they're going to give it back to you or that they're going to give you everything? And it has happened that uh, that's not the case, that they do run off with your money, and there's examples of that out there. So, so you really want to protect yourself against this and know what to do to protect, to, to recover without necessarily paying uh, for the ransom. So this is all, uh, about bitcoins. Um, and, they, and they're very sophisticated. These hackers are very sophisticated. If you don't know about Bitcoin, they will provide you instructions on how to make the payment. They will provide you a web page, uh, make like a help, they have like a help desk available for people to make to, to, to open a Bitcoin account and make transactions. They make it very user friendly. So how ironic is that? Uh, it's, it's a big industry this, and uh, they're very sophisticated, these hackers. So uh, that's about Bitcoin. So I want to ask you a question and ask yourself this. You know, what are your most important business assets? Okay, and that's, this is a, a strategic question that, that you should ask yourself and think about it. Because I've seen a lot of times that businesses pilot and they don't ask themselves this question. And it's important for you to understand. Um, the way I see it, there's two important assets, business assets. Is first your people, your people assets, and then your data, your data assets. You can't really run a business without good people and, uh, and, 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 and retain these good people. And then your data, which over time gets bigger and bigger. And like I said, this usually goes on autopilot and you don't realize it 
that over the time, over, over the years, you accumulate this database of just a lot of data. And if you ask yourself, what can your business survive without your data? Can your business survive without your people? Well, you know, that's why it's important to, to uh, you know, ask yourself that question and mitigate any risk that, that you have in losing either your people or losing your data. So ransomware is this type of attack on your data that basically takes it all, takes it all away. So again, ask yourself a question. Can you survive if you lose your data? Here's a slide with a couple of quotes. Uh, you know, uh, consequences of data loss and downtime. You know, 93% of companies that lose their data for 10 days or more during any type of disaster, they file for bankruptcy within a year. Okay, these are just statistics, right? Uh, of the companies that suffer catastrophic, catastrophic data loss, 43% never reopen. 51% close within two years. Okay, this is an impact of data loss. 30% uh, of businesses that have a major fire go out of business within a year and 70% fail within five years. So it's all related. There's a theme here. Data loss is very, very, uh, uh, it, it causes a, a big impact, negative impact on your business. And it's not something that happens every day. I mean, you cannot survive multiple data loss. It, it only takes one event to take you down. And so you really want to uh, be on top of this and don't be one of these statistics when it happens or if it happens. Uh, just one more slide here. Uh, ransomware, just in particular, were netted roughly 300, over $300 million, dam million dollars in damages worldwide in 2015. $325 million. Who's paying for this? Well, small businesses, the businesses that, that get, get, get affected. It, one, in Norton, you know, popular Norton, they did a study. 68,000 computers were infected, amounting to 5,700 a day. A day, 5,700 infections. I mean, imagine that. That's a, this is how, how big this, this, this uh, problem is. And the attacks are happening all over the world, but United States, North America is, is the biggest one being impacted. And these uh, uh, ransomware attacks typically come from Eastern European countries, um, um, and, but North America is, gets, gets affected a lot. So um, the most common type, type of ransomware, uh, like I said, crypto locker, it's kind of like the, the granddaddy that of, of the ransomware. And now there's many, many variations uh, you hear, and they kind of use a combination of locker, crypto locker, and you, know, you hear different names for, for, the, for, the, for different variations of it. Uh, so they all have different schemes behind it, but the idea uh, and, and how they actually infiltrate your networks, but the idea is pretty much the same, that they take your data, they encrypt it, and uh, you have to pay a ransom to get it back. That's the theory behind it. So this is a screenshot of an example of CryptoLocker, and you know it gives you a message, uh, you know a red big big message. Your files are encrypted. It gives you a timeline, a deadline for you to make a payment. So it basically threatens you. It tells you you have so much time to respond and pay, make a payment. Otherwise, your data will be lost. Okay, and it gives you some instructions. It gives you uh, um, you know how to how to make a payment, and it goes on through there. So it's very sophisticated. Uh, the, the newer ones are more sophisticated because as time goes on and uh, the, the security systems get updated to catch these, these malware attacks, new ones come about with uh, different variations of the same thing. Uh, so as I have here, they, they're distributed via exploit kits and spam. Uh, they install themselves in user profiles. Uh, basically, they encrypt anything on your computer, the folder on your computer, and it encrypts and it goes out to the network, any computers that are connected to your computer through a network, and even in map drive, so it, so it gets to your server, and even if you have information in the cloud that's being synchronized in the cloud, that information as well gets encrypted. So, um, you know, it, it basically encrypts any, any of the files that are in, in, in those folders, and, um, you know, then you, once you get that, once it's encrypted, it's going to be too late. You're going to get that message, and then you, you're going to have to take some, some action. So uh, uh, I'm going to get into a little bit more how, how this spreads now. So how, how does this spread? Well, basically, the, there's three main, three main ways. Spam, phishing attacks, okay? Spam is just all the junk mail, that, that junk email that gets uh, generated, and the ones that are specifically phishing attacks. 
phishing means it's the practice of sending out an email in disguise. So the email looks like it's coming from a, another company, but instead it's coming from a hacker. So for example, you can get an email that looks like it's coming from, let's say, UPS. Okay? It, it, it says the from address, a UPS address. The, the, the email itself looks like a UPS email. It has a UPS logo. It very, uh, uh, you know, branded like UPS, but in reality, it's coming from a hacker. And then it has a link that for you to click on, and, and it has a message specifically crafted so you can click on that link. For example, the message might say, uh, your package was undelivered, uh, click here to, uh, you know, to, to see why, or click here to, to uh, you know, to check the status of the delivery, for example. Um, so let's say you know it's Christmas time, the holidays. Who everybody's expecting packages, and even if you're not expecting a package, you might just be curious. You got the email from UPS, and and something happened, right? Bam! You click on the link. That's it. You got infected. You you go to a malware site, infect infected site, or you get an email for it. These are examples, right? You get an email, let's say, from your bank, or or you know from your bank. You know it looks like it came from your bank. It has an email address from the bank. It has it has a subject line, uh, we detected a problem with your account, uh, and it has an attachment, uh, something uh, you know, related to your account or a statement or something, this statement, verify your statement or something. You know, they'll craft, they'll be creative and create something where you won't think about it twice, and you're going to open that attachment. And once you open that attachment, bam, you're infected. So these are examples of phishing attacks, and the phishing email can come from even the from companies or from person that you know, if it's more uh, elaborate. So uh, it's really a big problem, and this is the way that they're getting to most people with these phishing emails and clicking on links uh, to, to sites that have these malwares embedded in them. Social engineering is another way, which is low tech. Social engineering uh, basically uh, uses people to trick uh, to trick other people into doing something. So it's basically conning people. It's like being a con, art, con artist and they trick somebody into doing something. So for example, somebody calls you on the phone and says, hello, Mr. So-and-so, this is, some, this is uh, Joe from Tech Support. We detected uh, uh, some problem on your computer. Uh, let me log into your computer. Uh, you know, can, and, then, and then they go on and on and they trick the person to give you their account number or their password. Uh, so that's an example of social engineering. And again, these people are, are artists, okay, and they'll craft a way to uh, engage in a conversation with you and trick you into giving you some information where they can later on uh, hack you, okay? That's social engineering. It happens a lot, a lot, okay? And internally, inside your company, it can happen. Like if somebody calls you and you think it's your IT department calling you, for example, and you wouldn't know. You're, you think it's your IT department calling you. They're saying, you know, something is, is not checking out. Uh, let me log into your computer and, and, you know, they'll walk you through some steps to go to a website so they can connect, et cetera, et cetera. So there's many different creative ways that they can do this. That's social engineering. That happens a lot. And the other one is, um, and also, again, about social engineering. They'll create, it's about a mental, it's about the psychology, it's about creating emotional triggers. Like I, I can see, I see, like I have here in the slide. Uh, let's say these news, this news uh, comes out, and somebody says, for example, oh, so such celebrity uh, just got engaged, or some such celebrity just fell off stage. Check out the picture here. They'll post it on Facebook. Okay, all the curious people want to see this video, this picture, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, whatever, and and that link can take you to a to a malware infested website, and that happens so much. Okay. People create these, these curiosity events to, to trick people into, into clicking on these, on these links, okay? Uh, so that's, that's social engineering, you know, a combination of social engineering. The exploit kits and drive-by downloads, is re it's very similar. It's basically, you can go to websites just browsing, and just browsing on a website that has a malware on it, can, right? Just by going to a web page, that can download onto your computer and then you'll get infected by, by, the, uh, by the malware. 
So by a simple fact of just browsing websites, a legitimate website can have a, can be uh, ha can have a malware on it, and you don't know about it. They don't know about it, and uh, and it, it affects uh, uh, thousands of people that visit the website. So that's the common way of how ransomware spreads. Okay. So again, I remind you if you have any questions, type it into the into the questions into the question box, and we'll get to them at the end. Uh, so that's typically how ransomware. Uh, spreads. Okay, so um, so what can be done? Okay, typically three things. First, education. You want to be aware. You want to train your staff. Basic computer security. Basic, basic. It, it goes a long way. You want to train them on to be, you know, aware of, of, of emails with links and attachments, uh, websites that they visit. You know, they, they can't just automatically just use a computer blindly and click on links left and right, double click here, double click there, uh, you know, open these links without thinking uh, email. You want to make them aware of the situation and that will help a lot. Just training, just based on basic training, okay? The next one is security is on your IT systems. Your IT systems have to be ready uh, for these attacks. And antivirus software, it's not just about antivirus on your computer. That's like the minimum. That was like 10 years ago. That's the minimum uh, s s software security protection that you can have. Um, so you have to be, have a more a comprehensive uh, security solution in place, starting with a, a good firewall to protect you from external uh, uh, intrusions on your network. And then you have different layers of protection. You do have your antivirus program on your computer. There's other layers of, 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 of security software. There's your firewall. There's your content filtering uh, systems. So there's many, there's multiple layers to protect you uh, against uh, these threats. And nothing is 100%, okay? All these security uh, systems and, and checks are all uh, layers of protection, but there's nothing really 100%. So what that means is that you have to have a fallback, a fallback plan, okay? And that's number three. You have to have a good backup solution. Now, backups, the word backup is used very loosely, okay? Backups, uh, not all backups are the same, okay? That's something that you want to make sure you understand. You, you might think that you have a backup and you, you have a backup, but they're not all the same. Different backups protect for different things and different degrees of disasters. Okay, so you want to make sure you have a good backup solution that can re that can help you in 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 many different types of scenarios, uh, and and I'll get to on the next slide. You know, here you know these are examples of different backups, so so called backups. You got data storage, file sync sharing, backup, disaster recovery, business continuity, file based backup, image based backup, local, cloud, hybrid. There's a whole what you know what's the difference? They all they all have the word backup, right? So you want to make sure, uh, you know, discuss this with your IT provider. Uh, you know, what type of backup do you really have, uh, and does it protect you in the event of ransomware or any or other types of disasters, not just ransomware? Okay. So the key word here, business continuity. Uh, you know, and 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 I have here uh, data storage and file sync is not equal to backup, and backup is not this business continuity. Business continuity means. Can be, means uh, mitigating downtime. Okay, if you're hit with a disaster, whether it's ransomware, power, an extended power outage, uh, you know, theft, or some other disaster, or some other types of disaster, uh, how much time is your business uh, down? Like your server is is, is corrupt, is, is you know, it's down for hours, days. Can you recover in a day, in an hour, in a week? Business continuity is trying to minimize the downtime and continue doing business even when you're having a disaster even when you have a disaster taking place. So a good backup uh, disaster recovery solution will, have, will be a business continuity solution. That's the ultimate. That's what you want. You don't care about backup. You want to you want to be you want to keep on doing business, right? That's the bottom line. How it gets done, backup, file sharing, all these things. That that's not what you want to focus on. You want to focus on business continuity. So that will recover you, that will save you in the event that you have a ransomware attack. So uh, discuss this with your IT provider and ha this is a conversation that you, that you want to have. So you want to educate, uh, you want to you train the people about it, uh, you want to make sure your security systems are in place um, because bypassing the training you have to rely on your security system to protect you 
And if you have, if you do fall infected, then you want to rely on your backups. Okay, so pretty much that's that's the formula here. So um, I have here basically, if you have a good backup solution, you don't have to pay the ransom because you have your data back. Okay, you have your data backed up properly. So, uh, so and, and you can restore from a different point in time. You can restore if it's a physical, if you have a physical problem, a physical disaster where your office is out. Uh, you know, there's a storm or your office is basically out of commission. Your whole office can, ba can basically be virtualized. All your systems can be run from a, from a redundant backup uh, uh, virtually in the cloud. So uh, that's, the, that's the key thing here that um, you can actually recover even if your systems are down from a good backup solution. Um, you have to test your backups. Over and over I go into offices and they say, yeah, I have a backup, but they never test it. So they don't really know if it works, the backup. And the only time they're going to know that it works is when they have a disaster. But that's not the, that's not the right time to, to check if the backup works. That's the time you really need it. So you really have to do tests. You have, you have to t do regular tests of your current backups to see if they actually work when you're going to need them. Again, that's something that you don't want to spend time on. That's something that's a task for your IT provider to do ongoing maintenance and support to do that for you. Uh, a good backup solution will have screenshot verification, which basically takes a screenshot of the backups of the whole entire system of whole servers or workstation, and they tell you by visually seeing a screenshot of the system that the backup is actually working. So that's an indication of of a of a, of a good backup so, um, of a of a good uh, backup uh, solution. And also, you want to make sure that your backup have different types of backup sets, right? You you don't just have one big backup because gigabytes of data and it takes time to recover data. So you want to recover first your critical data and, and, and then your other data. So there's some data that you need right away, other data that you can, you can recover later on. So that, that's all considered in your backup. So just to move on, just a, a high level uh, uh, diagram here. Uh, a good backup solution will, will back up not just the files, but it backups everything. Databases, applications, email, file system. It backs it up to a local appliance. Okay, right here you have a local appliance, so this is in your location. And then from there, it has a redundant copy in the cloud. Okay, so it's redundant like this, so you can, you can virtualize it. If, you, if something happens to your store, to your office, you can still recover and, and run your business from the cloud. So that's, that's the hybrid cloud solution. Okay, so uh, that's the conversation and, and what you really want to look into. So let's kind of wrap it up. The next steps that we have, basically share what you have, share what you learned. You know, share with your coworkers that they didn't see uh, attend this webinar. Talk, the, you know, start the conversation. Take action now, and don't be a victim. Okay, because this is happening over and over and over every single day. There's a link for a download for uh, an example of somebody that a uh, company that recovered from a from a disaster, and you can just uh, as a as a case study, you can take a look at that, or get get in touch with me. I'll send it to you. I'll send you the link. Okay. So let's kick off the question and answers. And before doing that, we have a raffle. Okay, Microsoft chipped in. We have a, an Office uh, 365 raffle. And uh, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, Steve, can you just pick up some uh, somebody randomly? And uh, let's raffle off a subscription to Office 365. And uh, so let's see if uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, hold on, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm, actually, I have it in a hat. I'm okay. going to pull one. I just want to make sure they're attending. Okay, uh, I'll say the first name and maybe the first initial. I don't want to okay. say anyone's name. Um, all right, so I have uh, Barbara M. Okay. And uh, there's only one Barbara on the call. So... Um, congratulations, so we'll, Barbara. So, so we'll definitely get in touch with her after. Okay, congratulations, Barbara. So now let's see. Uh, we'll 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 get in touch and, and give you the license, the one year license of Office 365. So let's get into some questions. Do we have any questions, Steve? Um. Okay, yes. I see one, one that came in here. Yeah, I got I got a couple. Okay, I got one here. Uh, it says. When the data is encrypted, is it also stolen by the hacker? Well, there's no. This is the wild, wild west. There's no rules here. 
the hacker is the is a criminal. You can I cannot tell you what the hacker does. The hacker does whatever they care, whatever they want to, right? You don't know. There's no guarantee. So what is for sure is that you don't have your data. Okay? Do they have do they take the data? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe one malware does, maybe one malware doesn't. So there's so that question is really um, it doesn't really help because uh, it, you you don't know you don't know I, can, I I know for sure that some don't but some may uh, so if they have access to your system that's it you're vulnerable you've been you've been uh, you've been hacked and uh, uh, so and, and oh, HHS uh, had a had a, a a guidance on this whether it's determined to be a breach or not uh, and it is it is it is considered to be a breach so. I uh, hope that answers your question. If the, when the data is encrypted, is it? Is it? Uh, oh, well, you know what? Hold on a second. Uh, I think I'm now thinking about the question. I think the question is if the user's data is encrypted, not if the hacker encrypted the data. I think I think that's what they're trying to say. Now that I'm thinking about it, if or maybe not. Maybe get back to my, if I answered your question, okay, great. If not, get back to me. So I'm not clear if, if which way is it. Is it if you encrypted it or if the hacker encrypted it? Any uh, uh, other question? Yeah, we got a few questions. Uh, here's here's a, a, looks like a two-part or three-part. Um, can you further explain which files crypto blocker impacts? How long does it take for the encryption to complete? Does uh, anti Malware software prevent this from infecting your system. That's part one. Okay. How, um, I'll, I'll go after. Okay. How long does it take? Uh, it, it 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 that all depends on on, on, on on the size of the date. I mean that it's uh, not sure where you get where you're getting at with the question. It, once once you're in, you don't know that you're you you do not get the message until until it's encrypted. So you're not going to know, okay? Once you get the message that says your data is encrypted, it's encrypted. Uh, so how long it, it took them to do that? It's not that relevant. The the antivirus, if the antivirus didn't catch it, it's it it's it's already doing damage. Uh, antivirus programs, like I said, it's not a hundred percent. The reason why antivirus program any security software always needs updates. The reason why Windows needs updates, antivirus needs updates, the firewall, every all, these updates are because there's always uh, cha always changing changes taking place. And if a virus, if there's a database of, of known viruses, the updates to the antivirus programs cover the known viruses. But then there's new viruses, so then the antivirus needs to be updated to protect you against the new viruses and the variations. So there's always, it's a cat and mouse game. So there's always a time, uh, a window of, of opportunity for the hackers to take, to take, uh, uh, to get into your system. So that's why antivirus pro is, is not 100% and to have um, some protection, you know, like your, the fallback. What's the other part? Uh, can the malware be on your system and you don't know it yet? Uh, is it yeah. a ticking time bomb? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, yeah, you 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 won't know it until you get that message, and and this is an example of malware. Some malware never show themselves, show their face. You might your computer can be infected by a particular malware that's not a ransomware, and do something on your computer and 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 treat and and use your computer like a zombie, and to to send out spam or to collect other information in your network, and you might not even know it. So yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I got, I got a few more. Uh, in addition to your typical endpoint antivirus, should uh, real-time spyware protection also be used network-wide? Yep, yep. Different vendors, different different software catch. Uh, they they don't like they don't all uh, uh, catch the same viruses. I mean, in general, they do. But again, it's it's uh, you know they have different algorithms for scanning and checking. So. Uh, your IT provider will definitely have more than one solution in the toolbox to protect okay. you and to scan. So yeah. Uh, another one: if the backups it, backup is an external drive backup and it gets backed up continuously, can the ransomware also encrypt the backup drive? Yep. If it's connected to the computer, yes. Uh, 
it, that's all it takes. It's just a connection from the from the computer to the drive, and uh, and even again, even even if it's syncing to the cloud, it goes from the computer to the drive to the cloud. So 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 yeah, even if it's an external drive, it can be infected. Yes. Uh, another one: if the drive is encrypted, like BitLocker, what can happen? Okay, yeah. If it's encrypted, it it it's it's no use for the hacker because. Um, you know, you're, you're, well, if it's encrypted, they're going to encrypt the encryption. So um, you're not going to be able to unencrypt the, it, it's kind of like, it, it's the same situation because it's still going to be, it's like double encryption. Okay, whatever you have, they're going to change it. So it's not about them reading it. They might not be able to read it. But they'll have they'll encrypt it over your encryption. So the only kind of protection there is that they're not going to have a, they're not going to be able to read your data because it's encrypted. However, they're going to encrypt it, so you you can't read it when you try to unencrypt it. So it's still a problem. So is it best practice to disconnect the external drive at the end of the day? That's a question. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, it's during the day. It it you you the activity happens 24 by 7. So it doesn't uh, the time of the day to disconnect it. It's not going to change uh, anything really. Um, okay. Right? And the last question was, can that prevent the breach? I'm not sure which. It was. Uh, can. The, the bit blocker. Bit blocker. If your data, yeah, can if your bit blocker prevent the breach? It doesn't. Pre well, it, it prevent. Well, yeah. In a way, yeah. If if your data is encrypted, and the data is is stolen or lost, that's a safe haven under under uh, under HIPAA. So it's not considered a breach. So if the if your data is encrypted to begin with, and and the data is lost, the encrypted data is lost, it's not considered a breach. You still, you still don't have access to it but because of the, the ransomware, but it's not considered a breach if it's encrypted to begin with. Okay, that's all the questions. Okay, so I'm going to leave you off with uh, just this video. Uh, it's a one minute video on, 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 gives you an example of ransomware on how it affected an entire city, the city of Plainfield. Uh, so. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, Advanced Data Systems Corp, thanks for the webinar. Uh, uh, reach out to, to Advanced Data System, or you, you can reach out to myself. My contact information is there. Just uh, you know, follow up. Any, any questions that you have about this and other things, just feel free to reach out. So uh, with that, I'm going to leave you with this uh, video. We've been reporting on more hackers using ransomware to hold computer files hostage for money. In February, Los Angeles Hospital paid about $17,000 worth of bitcoins after a data breach. Since then, several other medical institutions were crippled by ransomware, forcing them to turn away patients. Marco Morgan shows us how cyber thieves are raising the stakes. Marco, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Hackers are using ransomware to target everyone from consumers to businesses big and small to municipalities, and the payoff is huge. Now, we visited a city that fell victim to hackers and is still working to get its files back. Plainfield, New Jersey, a town of roughly 50,000 people, was taken hostage. The hijacker has requested or demanded a ransom. Mayor Adrian Mapp says hackers infiltrated their computer systems when an employee clicked on an infected link. City officials scrambled to pull servers offline, but three were compromised, leaving emails and other city files inaccessible. We have about 10 years of documents that we are not able to access. The hijackers held the files ransom, demanding roughly 650 euros paid in Bitcoin. Matt sought the assistance from law enforcement, but remains helpless in regaining access. This is a very serious problem that cries out for a solution, and we don't have it at the local level. Plainfield was a victim of ransomware, a type of malware that cybersecurity experts and law enforcement officials say is spreading nationwide. Who should be concerned? 
everyone should be concerned. It's the number one issue facing the computer security industry, and it's a very, very difficult thing to solve. Ryan Narain, a director at cybersecurity firm Kaspersky Lab, says the malware gets into people's computers often with a simple click. They prey on end users' willingness to click on the latest viral videos. They prey on uh, people's willingness to click on uh, Facebook links. Uh, they're even sending spam through email in addition to using Twitter. Once a computer is infected, it encrypts all files or locks the user out until they pay for the key. You have a documents folder here. You'll he demonstrated just how it works. I have a music folder here. I also have, uh, like everyone's computers, it's full of photos Pictures. and in many cases people's uh, family photos. Then the malware takes hold. The ransomware is communicating with the server. The server is sending instructions here to start encrypting all these files. Okay. In just minutes, the computer is compromised. This is what the end users see when the machine is now ransomware. Wow. This machine is now a part of the ransomware attack. And those photos? If I try to look at my, uh, all my photos from my last vacation, try to open this, it's nothing. It's garbage. Imagine an average business. This happening in the background, not only on this computer, but, but only encrypting computers. every computer within the network at the same time. In addition to a string of hospitals hacked, the village of Ilion, New York, paid hundreds in ransom in 2014, and the police department in Melrose, Massachusetts, paid nearly $500 to get back online. We are seeing an uptick in the, this type of activity. Ari Maharis heads the FBI's New York Cyber Division. One of the reasons our numbers are growing is because the idea that people are paying the ransom. In 2014, the FBI received more than 1,800 complaints about ransomware, an estimated loss of more than $23 million. In 2015, the Bureau received over 2,400 complaints. Victims lost over $4 million. These are just the cases that have been reported. We suspect that there are many more out there that haven't been. The ransom demands are often relatively small, hundreds to a few thousand dollars. But the loss to an individual or business can be huge. It's a very, very helpless feeling to open your computer and you don't have your computer anymore. How can you protect yourself? Good user habits, uh, common sense, backups, and patching. With, 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 with those basic things in place, I think you can, you can minimize your exposure to risk. Now, the hackers keep the ransom demands fairly small because the victims are more willing to pay. Mayor Mapp did not pay, but he told us that the hackers have disappeared, leaving the city with no one to contact. And they could even pay the ransom if they wanted to. But the bottom line, guys, you got to back up your files. It can happen to anyone. We saw the hospital in Los Angeles. Yeah. Seriously, she was nice. You treat the damage so quickly.